Romans chapter 1, Paul says there that underneath everything else, he says, quote, we worship and serve created things rather than the creator. We worship and serve created things rather than the creator. The second set of symptoms to find your idols is not just look at your nightmares, but look at your most uncontrollable emotions. Because Paul says, when you worship something, you serve it. He says they worship and serve created things rather than the creator. So if you worship something, if it's more important to you than God, you are to some degree enslaved to it. It drives you. You can't not have it. You can't live without it. And what that does is it creates uncontrollable emotions. But let me just give you one example. Some years ago, I talked to two women, uh, not, not the same year, but close enough that I could compare them. And both of them had husbands and they had one teenage son. And in both cases, their teenage sons were going off the rails. Uh, they were beginning to, they were having trouble in school. They were having trouble with the law. And they clearly were, uh, both sons were going bad because the fathers were being lousy fathers. The fathers were cold, they were remote, they had no time for their sons. And the wives could see that the husbands were ruining the son, their, their sons' lives. In both cases, the wives came to me as a pastor because they came to my church saying, you've got to help me because I am so bitter. I am so bitter and angry that our communication is breaking down between me and my husband and I'm not even sure our marriage is going to survive. So what I did in both cases was, I think what I was supposed to do, I said, are you professing Christians? Yes. And uh, do you believe in forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness? Yes. And that God's forgiven you? Yes. And you must forgive others? Yes. So we sat down, we looked at texts. We prayed together, we talked about, you know, you have to forgive your husband, let's pray for that, let's pray to God for that. To my surprise, uh, let's call her uh, Mother A, who had actually probably the worst husband of the two, and who actually hadn't been in the Christian church for a very long time, forgave. She broke through. Her anger dissipated. It was difficult. And then what she was able to do is start to move on and it actually helped the communication because when you're bitter towards somebody, you really can't communicate. You can't persuade them. You're just too furious at them. And their marriage got better. And because the marriage got better, the husband heard somewhat what he, she was saying and he improved somewhat enough for uh, the son to improve somewhat. And therefore, basically, we have a happy ending. But Mother B, who had been in the church much longer and who, from what I could tell, actually probably had the better of the two husbands, could never do it. She could not forgive. She couldn't let go. She was furious. She was angry. She couldn't stand him. And here's the great irony. Why was she unable to do it even though she tried? Why were her emotions uncontrollable? Why was her anger more than she could handle? Because even though I believe the first mother loved her son, the second mother made her son into the, her meaning in life. She looked at her son and, and actually she spoke like this. In her heart of hearts, she said, if my son is happy, if my son grows up well adjusted and loving me and having a happy life, then I'll know I did something right. Because I haven't really done much of anything else right. I haven't accomplished much of anything else. But if I just am a good mother to him and he grows up, then I'll feel like, you know, my life really had some kind of significance. Do you realize what she just did? Her mothering was her salvation. Her son was her savior and his love. In spite of the fact that she came to Christ, you know, to Christian church and said, oh, Jesus is my savior, but her son was her savior. Functionally, really, honestly. The Bible says we all worship and serve something besides the creator in our natural default mode. And that means that, ironically, she couldn't forgive her husband. She stayed angry at him. The relationship broke down. The communication broke down. The marriage broke apart. And the son got worse. Ironically, by loving her son more than she loved God, she destroyed him. Because your, your idol will always break your heart.